This LOS is Calculate and Interpret Ratios used in Equity Analysis and Credit Analysis. Some ratios for Equity Analysis. First of all, we've got the valuation ratios, and we've seen these before. Price to Earnings. The numerator is always the price per share. We can see that. And the denominator is always also on a per share basis. So uh, PE, it's price to earnings per share. Uh, P to CF, it's cash flow per share. P to S, it's sales per share. And P to book value, it's book value per share, okay? Then we've got some, also some ratios uh, or some formulas that we look at. Uh, the basic earnings per share, we've seen that before. It's net income minus preferred dividends divided by the weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding. Diluted earnings per share, we're gonna adjust our net income uh, available for ordinary shares reflecting conversion of diluted securities. So remember, if they were convertible preferreds, there would, we would no longer deduct the um, dividend. If it's convertible debt, we'd add back the debt times one minus the tax rate. And we've done that before in other LOS. That is uh, nothing new. We've seen it, the basic earnings per share, diluted earnings per share. That's uh, well covered in the CFA. And again, the uh, denominator for diluted earnings per share is the weighted number of ordinary shares and the potential uh, ordinary shares outstanding if, you, if they were converted. Cash flow per share, as I mentioned, the numerator on the cash flow uh, is always the CFO, the cash flow from operations. And again, per share basis, it's the weighted average number of shares outstanding. EBITDA per share, that's self-explanatory. The numerator is EBITDA. And again, denominator, weighted average number of shares outstanding. Dividends per share, common dividends uh, declared, divided by the weighted uh, average number of ordinary shares outstanding, okay? And then down here, there's some dividend-related uh, 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 formulas as well, ratios. The dividend payout ratio, we've seen that before. It's the common share dividends divided by the net income attributable to the common shareholders. Remember, we need to take out that preferred dividend again. Uh, the retention rate is uh, one minus the payout rate. One minus the payout is the retention rate. And remember, G equals retention rate times ROE. And then the ROE, we can, uh, we can do the de uh, decomposition of the ROE based on the DuPont. And that's all the, um, we go through a lot of those formulas when we get into the equity section, okay? So the, the payout ratio, again, the dividends divided by the net income attributable to the shareholders and the retention rate, one minus the payout ratio. And again, as I mentioned here, the sustainable growth rate, G equals retention rate times ROE. Quick little practice problem on the equity ratios. What does the PE ratio measure? A, the multiple that the stock market places on a company's EPS. B, the relationship between dividends and market prices. Or C, the earnings for one common share of stock. Pretty easy question, A is correct. It's called a PE multiple. So the PE ratio measures the multiple that the stock market places on a company's earnings per share. Now we're gonna look at some ratios with regards to credit analysis. So here we have the credit ratio, and again we have the numerator and the denominator. So you can see it's quite a list here. And again, we're, this is governed more in the um, fixed income section of the CFA level one, there is an LOS uh, with regards to some of the calculating some of the ratios for credit analysis, but we see it here for the first time, fairly important. So again, uh, if we look at the EBIT interest coverage, well, the numerator is easy, it's the EBIT, and then it's the denominator gross interest prior to deductions for capitalized interest or interest income. EBITDA interest coverage, again, the numerator is always fairly easy. Uh, it's listed in the name of the ratio, it's the EBITDA, and the denominator is the same. Uh, free uh, funds from operations interest coverage. Well, the numerator is the funds from operations plus interest paid minus operating lease adjustments. Aha, so there's a little bit of adjustment that we need to make to the numerator and the denominator is the same as the prior two. Return on capital, this is an interesting one. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we've seen this ratio before um, in the other LOS. The numerator is the EBIT and the denominator is the average capital where capital equals equity plus non-current deferred taxes plus debt, okay? So again, a little bit of uh, work on the de numerator and denominator that you need to remember. Um, funds from operations to debt, okay. The numerator is just the fund from operations, denominator total debt. Free operating cash flow to debt, 
Well, the numerator is the CFO, cash flow from operations adjusted, uh, minus capital expenditures divided by the total debt. Discretionary cash flow to debt, CFO minus CapEx minus dividends paid to debt, okay? Because discretionary, dividends are discretionary, by the way. They don't have to be paid, they're declared. Net cash flow to capital expenditures, it's the funds from operations minus dividends divided by capital expenditures. Debt to EBITDA, total debt to EBITDA, and total debt to total debt plus equity is total debt over debt plus equity. So uh, quite a few formulas there. And uh, again, we're gonna see a bit more of this in the credit analysis. Nevertheless, we're gonna do two practice questions to finish this LOS. So here's the first of two practice questions to finish this LOS. We've got company A, company B, and company C. And we're giving a number of um, different ratios. EBITDA margin, return on capital percentage, EBIT over interest expense times, EBITDA over interest expense times, debt to EBITDA and debt to capital. So this one says based only on the coverage ratios, the company with the highest credit risk is company A, company B, or company C. Okay, this is a good question. So you have to be able to identify not only the ratio, but uh, kind of what category it's fitting into. So when they're talking about the coverage ratios here, I put it in highlighted in green, we can see it's the EBIT over the interest expense and the EBITDA over the interest expense. So we're going to be looking for the company with the highest number, correct? For coverage ratios, we want a higher number. So we can see fairly quickly, it's company B has got the better coverage. The numbers are higher than both A and C. So again, let's just read, B is correct. The EBITDA interest expense and EBIT over interest expense uh, ratios are coverage ratios. Those are the coverage ratios. Coverage ratios measure an issuer's ability to meet its interest payments. A higher ratio indicates better credit quality. Companies B, EBITDA to interest expense, 62.4 times, and EBIT over interest expense, 58.2 times, are higher than those for companies A and C. So coverage ratios is the EBIT over the interest and EBITDA over interest. And that shouldn't be too bad because we know interest coverage ratio, we are always looking at the um, interest expense in the denominator. And one last practice question to finish this LOS. So it's the same table. We've got company A, company B, company C, EBITDA margin percentage, return on capital percentage, EBIT over interest expense, EBITDA over interest expense, debt to EBITDA and debt to capital. But it says this question is based only on the leverage ratios. The company with the highest credit risk is company A, company B, or company C. Okay, so this one I've put in bold green again. Now we need to look at the leverage ratios and I've highlighted that. That's the debt to EBITDA times and the debt to capital times, okay? Uh, remember the last question, we were looking at the coverage ratios and interest coverage ratio we should know, that's EBIT over interest expense, okay? Or, or for the EBITDA, it's also EBITDA over interest expense. So these were the coverage ratios and these are the leverage ratios. So it's important that you understand not only the ratio, what the ratio, the name of the ratio and the numerator denominator, how to calculate it, but also the calc uh, what category it falls into. We can see here EBITDA margin and return on capital, that's clearly profitability ratios, okay? And it, we didn't uh, do a question on those. So last question, we looked at the coverage ratios, now we're looking at the leverage. So as we know, uh, with regards to leverage, uh, if the, the, so we're looking for the highest credit risk. So the higher number, uh, we can see debt to capital, this has more debt, more debt as a, as a percentage of its capital structure. That's more debt equals more leverage equals more financial risk, okay? Uh, it's higher than uh, uh, companies B and A. So C is correct. The debt to capital and debt to EBITDA ratios are used to assess a company's leverage. Higher leverage ratios indicate more rev leverage, thus higher credit risk. Company C's debt to capital and also the uh, debt to EBITDA, also higher than both companies, so both were higher, uh, are higher, uh, so it has the highest credit risk. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.